Good morning, everybody. That is the advantage of being a bit older than most of you, that you will have a longer list of what you did. And I'm even beating you in age, so be careful. For you, provocative remarks are asking for an answer, so to say. And I completely agree that learning is at stake. And I'm learning day in, day out, and already a lifelong. And the best lesson I got when I just got the opportunity to get a second term in office in the European Commission after being the Commissioner for European um, Competition Policy, uh, I got the digital agenda um, uh, by surprise, but that only the Dutch are aware of. Um, by the way, getting that portfolio, for me it was the challenge. And the challenge was especially in the fact that being a commissioner for competition policy, you are the referee of the game, so to say, that is at stake in the economic activities. But being the commissioner for the digital agenda, it is really creative, it is innovative, it is in the heart of the matter, so to say. And when you are talking about learning, that was my first learning lesson in this portfolio. I visited a campus party in Madrid during the Spanish presidency, and there was a gathering of 700 whiskers all over the place from 27 member states in Europe. The age was from 14 till 29. They had preferred not staying in hotels or use hostels, but they all were accommodated in tents in big halls. And they went there with their computer, with their devices, with their uh, stuff, so to say, and came out, out of that tent early in the morning and just went in very late in the evening. And at a certain moment, I was just joining such a, <coughs> a gathering where they were building robots, where they were just developing software and what have you. And at a certain moment, the guy of 15 or 16 years old was just sharing his inventive with one of his other um, colleagues in, in this event. And I said to him, you are crazy, that's your competitor, come on, keep it. And he looked at me and he said, are you that old-fashioned? And I said, pardon me, I'm just trying to protect you. And he said, madam, nowadays sharing means a better competition position, for I'm learning. And that was the best lesson I got for this portfolio. It is sharing, it is joining, and it is, by the way, and if you allow me to say so, Dr. Talal, it is not new ice, it's a new mindset. It's even more than ice. It's a new mindset. And that what is what is at stake. And therefore, it is all about developing. I, anyhow, I'm living in a developing surrounding and a developing climate, so to say. And well, that will be my last reaction on your provocative uh, remarks. Global crisis, Western crisis, I couldn't care less. There is a crisis. And the crisis is having a big influence on all the people on the earth. No doubt about that. For even if your country has great gross figures, there are still a lot of people who really need to have our backing in getting on that learning curve and getting the instruments that, that they can survive. I just visited two days ago India and I'm impressed by the growth figures, but I'm also impressed by the big, big challenge of so many people who really need a lot of backing. The same, by the way, in Europe, so let's come to Europe. But I don't need to say that it is a pleasure to be in your midst, and I'm impressed by so many people. We are all aware that in the last 20 years, the information and communications revolution has really taken off. And sometimes we are forgetting, not only in the political arena, talking about Europe, for not that long ago, we were just with a couple of member states. And in my earlier activities, when I was still a national politician, I indeed uh, joined the Council of Ministers in Brussels, and we were just with a couple of member states. If you would have told me 
in the 80s, at the end of the 70s, that nowadays we are with 27 member states in the European family, that we do have a single market, and I hope for, we can say a digital single market, that we have a euro, and the euro is a strong currency. It's not a euro. It is about politicians where the problem is, not the euro itself. And if we have that, and not only politicians, by the way, I know another category that is at stake, but you are aware of that. And the banking uh, people are uh, not uh, out of blame, so to say. But if you would have said at that time, single market, 27 member states, a euro, and that I would be the commissioner, I would have sent you to a, to a psychiatric hospital, for that was unbelievable that couldn't be taken place in such a short term. Just to mention that, how things are developing, and we are all thinking that with our iPads and our devices, that's there forever. The iPad is less than a couple of years, so can you imagine, and we can't imagine that we can live without it. So, the smartphones, the tablets, the internet, a world of opportunities, and they are really available. They are readily usable for today's generation, as the home telephone, the radio and the television once were. These days, people can enjoy access to information and expect it anytime, any place and anywhere. And these days, excellence in education is the key to ensuring Europeans can keep the opportunities and lifestyle that recent generations have taken for granted. By the way, we need to combine. We need to combine those ingredients and let technology support and enhance learning. For formal education in schools, and for formal education throughout our lives. And elsewhere in the world, people have realized this potential. Talking about South Korea, all classrooms will go fully digital by 2015. Ending paper, ending textbook. I recently visited a primary, a primary school in the slums of Nairobi in Kenya. And thanks to a private initiative, that school with thousands of pupils and under different circumstances than most of us are used, they were introduced to uh, the computer. And they have realized the potential of ICT. They are teaching kids the computers. And the impact of those, and what was fascinating, small kids, seven, eight years, and I was just going through the classrooms, and I was asking, what are you planning and can you explain to me what is at stake? And it was fascinating. The girls, especially the girls, they were fascinating in dreaming about their future. It was a future about being a judge, being an international politician, being involved in development of not their country alone, but being involved in their continent. Can you imagine seven, eight years old who normally spoken were talking about being a nurse and then it was already sky high, so to say, just by introducing a computer in the classroom. So why here in Europe do most of our classrooms still feel like they did when I was at school? When digital media can be combined to create interactive, rich content to help teaching, why are we still based on blackboards, textbooks, and a uniform approach for everybody? In today's digital world, are we really doing all we can to ensure we use the digital revolution to educate, to enrich, to enlighten? My goal is quite clear. Every European digital and I mentioned it, and I just promoted it, and my people were warning me, my cabinet, my people in my ministry, they were warning me and saying, you are taking a big risk, and I said, 2030, every European digital. If you don't take risk in life, you will never be uh, successful in the result. And that has to include education and training. Every European digital is not a goal in itself. There needs to be 
in a, a, a public that is indeed enjoying what you can do with it. So we need every teacher digital and every student digital, whatever your discussion is about teaching and learning. And right from the very start of formal education and as part of a lifelong learning. New technological solutions can vastly improve learning systems like never before. That is absolutely uh, clear. And they use tools that are not just theoretical ideas, not just for the rich and the lucky and uh, those technologies are routinely and readily available. The exhibitors and participants in this conference are living examples. If the solutions can transform our relationship to knowledge, how we find it, access it, acquire it, then it is our duty to make sure everyone has that opportunity. And that should not have to wait. To wait until they are locked onto a career path. They should have those opportunities from the earliest age, including at school. And no two people learn alike. There are as many ways to learn as there are learners. Some people need time to approach an idea from new angles, but those who get it straight away will get bored if they can't move on. And some people want to hear an explanation, others to see a demonstration, and some learn best by themselves, others in a group. <coughs> some in a formal learning environment, others <coughs> at home over morning coffee, and so on. Technology can respond, it can tailor learning, and it can help people learn at their own path, in their own way, wherever they are, and throughout their lives. And let's embrace that fact, and let's change the way we learn. Because if we don't provide those opportunities, we will be guilty. We will be guilty of a grand failure, a failure to give our children the best chance in life. And of course, the words are the easy part. And I know you share a desire to fulfill this potential. The hard part, of course, is changing things. And that is perhaps the most challenging change agenda of our time. And it's scary because no one leader, no one government, no one technology can be in control. But that also reminds us that we can all shape that agenda, you and I. So how do we do that? How do we give teachers the tools to make learning most effective? Give students the best opportunities to improve themselves and ensure that in every classroom, in every workplace, in every home, everyone can learn in the way the best suits it. My main message is that we must not be concentrated by how things have, done, have been done in the past. Rather, let's be creative, a new mindset, putting learners and learning at the center of our efforts. Three key ingredients. Number one, we need to make digital literacy, digital skills and technology support of learning central to the public policy agenda. You are now without digital skills in the 21st century, ignoring the fact you'll just breed social exclusion. With more in the future, Europe could face a massive ICT skill gap. If we don't have the ICT specialist we need, our economy will suffer. We need to get kids from a very young age learning about IT, exposed to online education and expanding their career horizons. And we must ensure we are reaching out to everyone, and especially in particular women. Women are not significantly represented in the ICT sector. They are underrepresented. They are often deterred from it because of outdated attitudes or because women don't think it's a sector for them. We need to change it. It is a sexy sector, so to say. Number two, 
we must use the full range of funding and support. The EU invests heavily in this area, around 60 million euros in research and innovation every year. Our Horizon 2020 research program will carry on that good work for the next decade. But we couldn't just focus on research and new gadgets, often the technology is already out there on the market today. It just needs to be adapted and used. Pre-commercial procurement could also be a useful tool by acting as technological law, demanding first buyers. Public procurers can drive innovation from the market that supplies them. Good for our public administration who buy those tools, good for students and teachers who use them, and good for domestic suppliers who can take the lead in a developing global market. Third, if we are serious, ladies and gentlemen, about tackling the problem, let's engage all stakeholders. And let's be honest about the problem of cultural inertia. In our educational system, some teachers some administrators don't know how or why they should access technology. Others simply don't want the inconvenience of change. And in our working place, those who control the money may be reluctant to make investments with an unclear or long-term payoff. So we have to show that those technologies are not about sidelining educational professionals and they are not about wasting money on gadgets. Rather, they are about empowering, supporting teachers, giving them new teaching techniques. And as for the money, we need to show it is not a cost, it is an investment, an incomparably powerful investment in human capital. And teachers and trainers themselves, the front line of the learning revolution, can have a huge and positive impact on how this plays out. Technology can help them adopt, reach out to every student, get the most out of every student, achieve new success with every student. And just as technology can tailor the individual learning experience, it can tailor the teaching experience too. So a teacher's efforts can go towards a student where they can have the greatest impact. To really make this case, we need to join forces. Because to transform education, we will need not just education experts, not just technology experts, not just funding experts. We need all three. We need people from all those areas to sit down, to work together and understand each other's needs. That is the only way to get products which are useful to teachers, trainers and students. Products which are reliable, user-friendly and which make a difference on the front line. I propose to get everyone together in common multi-stakeholder platform. So those making technology can learn the needs of those in education. Educators can learn, can support and champion the benefits of new technology. And overall, so we can mainstream new technology into the European education and training systems. Indeed, in the field of caring, for the elderly, we have created a successful European innovation partnership. And that could in due course prove a useful model for education too. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, changing learning through technology might not be an overnight process, but it will be a revolutionary one. And at the moment we are on the right road. We are moving, but too slowly. So let's speed up, let's work together to put this right at the center of our public policy agenda. Information and communications technology has already transformed how we connect, interact and transact. And with the right ingredients and the right approach, we can give learning and education to the right full place in the revolution. And there is no time to waste given the current economic situation. We need to wake up to every new opportunity for growth. 
innovation, knowledge, are the lifeblood of our economy. And it's essential for a prosperous Europe and a prosperous world. And innovation and knowledge can give us the boost to get out of this crisis. If we use technology properly, we can create both smart jobs for the next generation and the educated workforce that can fill them. We have to think not of what is, but what could be. Not simply to repeat the comfortable habits of the past, but to capture the massive opportunities of the digital future. Learning new things is not just for pupils and trainees, it is for everybody in our education and training system. It is for you and for me. It is for learning to do things differently. And if we do that, if we are willing to do that, build a new way of mindset, then the technology gives us the tools to reach out many more than we were used to. We can stimulate an economy that produces wild, exciting innovations to support the education sector. And we can build a society where education is endless, an endless adventure for everybody. Isn't that a challenge? I anyhow sincerely hope that you will join me in that revolution.